right. I'm back. It's showtime. I am the reigning raving reviewer, and today, today I'm going to be looking at my 2024 GMC King. I know what you're thinking. Yes, the platform is a little bit new, but believe me when I tell you, it's got plenty of quirks to justify a raving review. Let's take a look. Let's start with the engine. Your sole choice is a 2.7 liter turbo four cylinder. Well, there's three different versions of said 2.7 liter. The first one makes a laughable 237 horsepower and 259 pound-feet of torque. The plus version made 310 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. And the Turbo Max makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. The early 2.7 liter engines had some problems with overheating. The ones found in this generation of Colorado and Canyon, on the other hand, they got sent over to the diesel division for beefing. We're talking massive bearings, all forged internals, heavyweight cooling system, and extensive testing. These engines are very new, but they might wind up being a GM version of the 2JZ. One stupid thing, it has cylinder deactivation. A fucking four-cylinder has cylinder deactivation? You don't have to be a math teacher to know that it doesn't have many cylinders to spare. I've only seen it pop on once, for about two seconds. It's beyond worthless. It also has a delightful quirk where it revs up to 1500 RPM when cold, but that's a feature for emissions. The only transmission option is the 8L80 8-speed auto, which is supposedly revamped to fix all the issues that they have with the 8-speeds. I've had no issues at all. I got the 4x4, but be careful which trim model you get, as some only come with a one-speed transfer case and no neutral. I accidentally got this version, which is fine, but I would like a low speed and neutral. Now let's talk about the looks. They're both vastly improved from the previous gen. I personally think the GMC Canyon is the best looking truck on the road. It has some nice variety to the colors. You can see that I picked baby shit yellow. But hey, I never lose it in a parking lot. Let's look at the basic tow bar this thing has. What the shit? I can understand not giving you a receiver hitch, but for the love of God, why would they give you the bar and trailer hooks but no freaking receiver? Oh, you have to take the plastic off the bumper or drill it out and then bumper pull. Or give us the fucking receiver, assholes! Now let's talk about the electronics. Oh boy, here's where the wheels fall off this bitch. The 23's had an update that bricked the battery on the truck. Now fortunately they fixed this, but it still concerns me that that could happen. After the truck's been running, if you kill it, it makes all kinds of suspicious noises. Really makes me paranoid. Oh, come on, that can't be normal. It's completely powered by Google and completely hidden behind a paywall. If you want to access your features, you have to pay for the internet plan. Even little stuff like voice commands and text to voice needs the internet package, and that's horseshit. None of my other brands have required that. Don't even think about maps. I use Android Auto, but still, dick move, GM, dick move. The interiors are very nice. A little too much hard plastic, but it's a mid-sized truck. And it's like a Cadillac compared to the Tacoma. The stock stereo rivals the Bang & Olufsen in my old Mustang. Wait. What the shit? Do you notice anything missing? Where the fuck is the light switch? Where the fuck is the light switch? Oh, it's in the screen. And automatic. Don't like that. Not one little bit. Also, watch what package you buy. Some don't have cruise control. Now, I'm all for a basic bitch truck. But come on. Any truck in the $30,000 range should have cruise control. Easy way to find out is by the sliding back glass. If it's missing, you don't have cruise. 
So what's the final verdict? I am not a truck guy. Never have been. Out of the long list of daily drivers that I've owned, only four have been trucks. The modern full-size truck reminds me more of a station wagon. They're big, and they're luxurious, and they have a smooth ride, and that just ain't a truck to me. This GMC Canyon, on the other hand, I like the shit out of it. It reminds me of the old GMT 400 Silverado, and that's about the highest compliment I could possibly get. Does it have problems? Yeah. Does it have quirks? Absolutely. Are there going to be serious problems in the future? Probably. But let's be honest. I'm not going to have that truck long enough to actually see those issues come to light. So yeah, it has my stamp of approval. Thanks for watching.